Dear friends of Islam, Mind Polish is here once again to share valuable Islamic insights, hoping to inspire your activities today. Remember to click the subscribe button and activate the bell notification so you won't miss any updates from Mind Polish, where we present multiple interesting topics from science to religion and more. Hajar Aswad, or Black Stone, a revered stone by Muslims, is situated in the eastern corner of the cube-shaped Kaaba. This stone boasts a rich history and is highly esteemed by scholars worldwide. For centuries, Hajar Aswad has sparked debate and speculation about its origins. Secular historians propose that it is a stone that fell from outer space. Concurrently, numerous geologists globally have examined its type and nature to uncover more about its scientific properties. Leading researchers have undertaken extensive studies to delve into the origins of Hajar Aswad. In this video, we will delve into the scientific studies conducted by researchers to uncover the mysterious origins of the Black Stone or Hajar Aswad. Our goal is to gain a deeper understanding of this phenomenon, which continues to intrigue scholars to this day. Here's the video. The Black Stone holds a significant place in Islamic tradition, with a rich history rooted in myths and legends. It has been a crucial element in the development of Islam, from the time of Prophet Abraham to Prophet Muhammad. According to belief, Hajar Aswad is a stone from heaven, brought to earth by Prophet Adam. Over the centuries, the stone deteriorated and broke into several pieces during medieval times. These fragments were later reassembled and set into a silver frame. Historically, Hajar Aswad has experienced color changes. Prophet Muhammad is reported to have said, a black stone came down from heaven, and it was whiter than milk, but the sins of the sons of Adam turned it black. This suggests that the stone's black color symbolizes the sins of humanity. The government of Saudi Arabia has released a 49,000 megapixel high-resolution photograph of Hajar Aswad, allowing viewers to see every detail of this sacred stone. Inside the Grand Mosque, there are eight clusters of Hajar Aswad attached to a larger stone and framed by silver. Additionally, fragments of Hajar Aswad are claimed to be in Istanbul, Turkey, with one piece housed in the Saniya Grand Mosque. Surprisingly, other fragments are found in a museum in England. Why are these fragments in England? Here are the facts. The removal of these pieces began when scientists learned about the virtues and wonders of Hajar Aswad. In the UK, three fragments are kept for research purposes. As a special and sacred stone to Muslims, Hajar Aswad has always attracted public interest, particularly among geologists. Over time, various experts have conducted research to gain a deeper understanding of the physical characteristics and geological processes that may have contributed to the formation of Hajar Aswad. Naturally, researchers hold diverse views and opinions about Hajar Aswad. One such researcher, Richard Burton, embraced the Islamic creed after conducting extensive research on the stone. Among the hypotheses regarding the origin of Hajar Aswad is the idea that it came from a meteorite. This hypothesis is based on a catalog of meteorites compiled by G.T. Pryor, who classified Hajar Aswad as an Aeli or Siderolite, a type of meteorite rich in iron and silicates. Pryor contends that Hajar Aswad is an Aerolite meteorite, resembling an ordinary stone and not predominantly composed of iron and nickel like typical meteorites. Anthony Hampton and a team of geologists from the University of Oxford examined local soil samples collected from the area surrounding the Hajar Aswad stone. They discovered rare amounts of iridium and cone fragments in the samples. This rare geological find, typically formed in the bedrock beneath a meteorite impact crater, was first identified by Paul Parch, a curator of mineral stones during the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Parch published the first comprehensive report on the Black Stone in 1857, suggesting that Hajar Aswad might be a meteorite fragment that broke apart about 6,000 years ago. However, this hypothesis has sparked significant debate, especially since some findings suggest that Hajar Aswad has the ability to float in water. This is contrary to the characteristics of meteorites, which are typically dense and sink in water. In 950, 
the governor of Mecca, Abdullah ibn al-Zubair, tested stones believed to be Hajar Aswad fragments stolen by the Karmatians 22 years earlier and confirmed that they did indeed float. This discovery challenged the notion that Hajar Aswad was a meteorite. Furthermore, no meteorite rocks with the same characteristics as Hajar Aswad have been found, making it difficult to definitively attribute the stone to a meteorite origin. Despite these controversies, the meteorite hypothesis remains one of the perspectives in the ongoing research on Hajar Aswad. Researchers continue to investigate the stone's properties and characteristics to gain a clearer understanding of its origins. Another hypothesis proposed regarding the origin of the Hajar Aswad stone is that it is a volcanic rock, specifically pumice. Pumice forms from volcanic eruptions that produce magma-rich in silicon dioxide or acidic rocks, which are generally light or bright in color, unlike dark mafic rocks. A study by the United States Geological Survey suggests that Hajar Aswad is likely obsidian from a lava flow typical of the volcanic fields on the western Arabian coast. Conversely, researchers Robert S. Dietz and John McCone from the Department of Geology at the University of Illinois argue that Hajar Aswad is not a meteorite but a ringstone, a mineral formed within the Earth. They state that its diffusion bands and other physical characteristics indicate it as agate. Some scientists note similarities between Hajar Aswad and pumice. Pumice is generally light in color and has a porous structure, resulting in a very low density less than 1 gram per cubic centimeter, which aligns with reports that Hajar Aswad can float in water. Pumice typically forms in violent explosive eruptions with a volcanic explosivity index, VEI, of 5 or higher, often producing a caldera. Such eruptions are common in Indonesia, exemplified by the 1883 Krakatoa eruption and the 1815 Tambora eruption. However, attributing the Hajar Aswad stone to pumice presents challenges within the geological context of the Arabian Peninsula. Volcanic activity in this region primarily produces mafic rocks, not the acidic rocks that generate pumice. The volcanoes here are generally basaltic, producing dilute basaltic magma and forming wide volcanoes with low conical peaks. This makes it difficult to establish a link between Hajar Aswad and the volcanic rocks of the Arabian Peninsula. Although calderas are present in areas like Harat Kabar, they formed approximately 580 million years ago, far too old to have produced pumice. Therefore, the hypothesis that Hajar Aswad is a ringstone or volcanic rock becomes less plausible. The volcanic activity in the Arabian Peninsula did not produce significant pumice, and there is no evidence of explosive eruptions large enough to create pumice similar to Hajar Aswad. Thus, while the volcanic rock hypothesis attempts to connect Hajar Aswad to pumice within the Arabian Peninsula's geological context, it remains difficult to confirm. Further research is needed to better understand the origin and physical characteristics of this sacred stone. Some scientists suggest that Hajar Aswad could be the oldest rock in the world, though its exact age remains unknown. Typically, scientists determine the age of rocks using methods such as carbon dating and lead analysis for fossils, the age of the subsoil, and other related techniques. However, no current method can accurately determine the age of Hajar Aswad. Another point of interest is that no rock similar to Hajar Aswad has ever been found leading to the conclusion that this rock is neither of terrestrial origin nor a fragment of a meteorite. Its density is notably different from any other rock known in the universe. In an effort to better understand the origin of Hajar Aswad, another hypothesis suggests that it may be a type of impactite. Impactite forms from the high-speed collisions of celestial bodies, involving immense energy. Elizabeth Thompson, a Swedish geologist and paleontologist from the University of Copenhagen, has expressed her views on Hajar Aswad. Thompson asserts that Hajar Aswad is not a meteorite but an impactite. On the mainland of Saudi Arabia, impactite, the product of such celestial collisions, can be found at the Wabur Meteor Crater, approximately 550 kilometers southeast of Riyadh. She explained that the Wabur structure, where rocks similar to Hajar Aswad are found, 
generally consists of white glass blocks containing silicon, with some parts having blackish sheets. Thompson's theory is intriguing as it aligns with a hadith describing Hajar Aswad as a stone whiter than milk. Impactite often has a hollow structure, trapping gas within the rock, which allows it to float in water. This characteristic is consistent with experiments demonstrating the floating properties of Hajar Aswad. However, further analysis disproved Thompson's hypothesis, revealing that the Waber structure formed in 1704, just a few centuries ago. This is significantly younger than the construction of the Kaaba, which occurred around 4,000 years ago, making it difficult to associate Hajar Aswad with the Waber structure. Therefore, it can be concluded that Hajar Aswad is neither a meteorite, volcanic stone, nor impactite. Despite numerous studies, the origin of Hajar Aswad remains a fascinating mystery. Nonetheless, what is certain is that Hajar Aswad holds sacred value in Islam. Prophet Muhammad himself honored the stone by kissing it, underscoring the importance of respecting the religious significance of Hajar Aswad. Amidst scientific uncertainty, it is crucial for Muslims to maintain the honor and reverence of the Hajar Aswad stone. Hajar Aswad remains a symbol of piety, purity, and obedience in the spiritual journey of Muslims. Hopefully, this video will be useful for all of us. Thank you for staying until the end and we hope you would consider to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time on Mind Polish.